Hello Nigeria, hello world. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. We're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos and we guarantee you another week of, you know, real, um, real enlightenment when it comes to sports business. All right, so today we are going to be talking about sports media broadcast. Um, this is like a continuation from last week but we have a different resource person in the studio and then subsequently we'll talk about golf in nigeria yeah golf makes um, a debut on the very young young program and um, you all know that golf is big money you know i'm sure that your interest is piqued already uh, but where do we stand in relation to golf on the global stage all right so we're going to be talking to first mr rotimi pedro he is the principal consultant, Afrosport Media Group. And then afterwards, we'll speak with Mr. Remy Olukoya, who is the CEO of Falcon Golf Development Company Limited. That's a bit of a mouthful, right? But that's our lineup for today. A lot has happened in the sports industry uh, over the last week. And the biggest of it is the fact that Rangers uh, were at the champions in waiting, uh, the MPFL champions in waiting. All right, we're going to be talking about that and a lot more in the course of the next 45 to 50 minutes. So stick with us because there's a lot you're going to hear about sports that could change your perception of the industry and open up an opportunity or two for you or your organization. All right, so let me give you a minute or two to stretch your legs, grab some water, and really prepare, invite a friend or two to be a part of this program. And when we return, I'm going to be talking to Mr. Rotimi Pedro. And um, what the subject is going to be sports, sports media broadcasting. He has extensive experience in, this, in, this, uh, in the sports media industry, and he's going to be sharing all of that with us when we return. So stick with Plus TV Africa for the next 40 minutes. Don't go away. When we return, the business begins. Welcome back to Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa and we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. Let me introduce my first guest to you. We're going to be talking about sports media broadcast. He is Mr. Rotimi Pedro. Hi, Rotimi. Hi, how are you? Ken? I'm very well. And today, we're, you know, you're going to have to explain to us what sports media broadcast really is. I'll try my best. Because um, it's, it's a huge part of, of, of the industry. That's, it accounts for, you know, the biggest part of, of um, the income generation, you know. But it doesn't feel like we have gotten the hang of that yet in Nigeria, you know. So what do you think we need to do now? What's the state of the industry in Nigeria uh, when it comes to, come to broadcast? And, and what do you think we need to do? What's coming? Well, I mean, uh, I mean to describe it, I mean, sports media are two different industries, actually. Mm. To sport is sport, media is media. Mm. Uh, but two, you have two industries in one. Mm. Um, one gives the light to the other and media industry over the years has been over the i think the turn of the 21st century mm. uh changed the cost of sports as we know it mm. uh from a uh physical development uh, or an, an amateur pursuit mm. uh to a commercially hyper commercial venture okay. media is the one that does that mm. um otherwise sports would have remained amateur yeah uh, for the last part of the last century but one once media came actually turn the faith of sports industry mm. completely so this is the, you have the acronym sports media but well, i tend to see it two different uh, symbiotically linked uh, Industry, industries yeah. uh, sports is sports and media is media mm. uh, but we that operate the struggle between the two we mm. call it sports media mm. um, and i'll explain the reasons why uh, that distinction is important um, what sport does to uh, what media does to sports is it turning to a commercial venture completely? Mm, yeah. uh, without the media, we will still be in the amateur sports of the mm. turn of the last century, mm. and that's where we are. But when TV came, radio came, it shone the light into it. Mm. It took uh, the amateur sports 
from the arena to mm. the world. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's what the media industry did. Yeah, yeah. And what did the sports industry do for the media industry? Mm. <laughs> he gave it compelling content. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they work hand in hand. And um, you find out these days, uh, the catalyst to development of sports as, as a, as a, uh, from an amateur pursuit, which by and large, a lot of our sports is still in Nigeria, mm. uh, into a um, into a hyper commercial, I call it hyper commercial venture, mm. uh, is the absence of a compelling media offering mm. in the industry. Mm, mm. Um, you would, um, I mean, it happened anywhere in the world, but, but by the time you actually turn your media switch on properly, mm. uh, then you realize that, okay, you've got a gold mine sitting there. Because mm. that's what takes the sports from the arena into the world. Mm. And that's what turns into a huge commercial business. Mm. Uh, without the uh, media, you don't have a business in sports. Mm. Uh, so it's important that um, uh, the policymakers understand the role mm. of the media industry. Mm. And what have you had in the last um, 20, 30 years of sports media, or so to speak, the media industry that covers sports mm. uh, in this country? You've had a, a, a quasi-monopolistic situation uh, mm. that actually that's killed all the other opportunities the lack of production capacity itself mm. uh, to cover small sports. The Premier League, I mean, the professional league itself is struggling for coverage mm. this, but mm. we are getting there. Uh, it's not all doom. Mm. Uh, and um, you find out that with, with the lack of industry uh, in our sports business, mm. it's not unconnected to the lack of compelling production capacity yeah, uh, in okay. the country. Mm. Uh, once you actually put the capacity there, mm. you take the media from the arena, mm. then the business tries. Mm. So the missing link uh, is actually, we keep complaining about the uh, lack of interest mm. uh, uh, in the Nigerian sport. Because yeah. there's no media coverage. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's no media coverage for it. And uh, you put the media coverage in it, then you begin to get the return on investment. You begin to get advertising it. Sports gets the opportunity the nature of sport is that the uncertain outcome is compelling content for media yeah, uh, yeah. you don't know who is going to win, win yeah. and you stick to your television set mm. that's the reason why it's it's a win-win situation sports rub the back of media media rubs the back of sports, sports. so it, it, it's a marriage that we are yet to perfect in this country yeah. once we understand that sports business is media infrastructure yeah then we begin to do the right thing that is that's very well put because you know like you have said, and the easy way that probably this can get across to fans yeah. or to the viewers who are not versed in media yeah. is you're playing a sport in an arena yeah. and there are 5,000 people there. Yeah. You put a camera there you get five and you put it on television or you stream it and there are five, potentially 5 billion people that you're reaching. You know? So that's how, and it goes from some minute event to a global event. Um, event. But so is there, is there hope? Are we beginning to understand that? Is there, do we understand, do we see the opportunity? Do we even understand the opportunity? Well, I mean, I believe the policymakers have largely neglected the, uh, uh, the key importance of media mm. to sports development. Mm. Um, without the media, again, uh, you don't get the money in. Mm. Uh, without the money, you don't develop. Mm. So the the key to unlock, uh, I mean, um, sports development uh, in modern era mm. is actually uh, media. Mm. And um, in the saddest day for me in this country uh, in the last 15 years, uh, was when Super Sports put, pulled out most of their production assets, sports mm. production assets in the country. They invested a lot uh, in the sports. Oh, uh, they have? No, they, they, they're not. They, that's why they didn't, they're not covering uh, the yeah. Premier League. Okay. And they sold most of their OB vans and things like that. Okay. Uh, so that took away a bit of a huge um, opportunity for us mm. Um, mm. as sports media practitioners in this okay. country. And, but uh, uh, it took about four or five years before we realized, okay, this is, this is the missing gap. Mm. And uh, people have actually started investing in the ability to cover mm. uh, the Premier League now. And a lot is coming down the line further down uh, in that space. But it looks like it's even getting more affordable to do now. It's cheaper to, maybe because of technological developments, you, yeah. can, it's, it, you don't need this big OB, this very expensive OB yeah. vans anymore. Yeah. Is that the case? Yeah, well, technology has actually simplified the uh, production, production, but you still need certain um, um, 
media. Media is just not necessarily should, should not be about just the camera. Mm. I think the bigger part of media itself is what you've been doing for months and months. Mm. It's about the storytelling. Okay. Uh, it's about the drama. Mm. It's about the history. Yeah. And uh, and that is where the, it's putting a camera in a stadium to cover it is enough. Uh, it's not enough. It's, uh, it's, it's simple enough. Yeah. Uh, but the storytelling behind it, the yeah. Bendel insurance, uh, yeah. even yeah. the history, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rivalry, mm. the Rangers you mentioned mm. a few mm. minutes ago, the rivalry, that's where the work is. Uh, and that's what we are not doing enough of. Yes, live coverage is good, mm. but you need to connect it as a cultural event as mm. well. A cultural event. Uh, why, why should I be watching this? If you tell me that, oh, Rangers beat uh, Bendel Insurance in 1972, mm. and this is who scored, mm. then I say, okay, so maybe we can have one back on them today. Mm. The mm. storytelling is the biggest part. Mm. And if you look at the, I mean, where, what, what I point to as the global best practice mm. uh, in doing what we're trying to do in Nigeria, I mean, I know you don't like to hear that. This is <laughs> <laughs> the, the, no, the, it's the, not like I don't like the, to hear the, just that. The, the storytelling yeah. behind yeah. it. Is what making a compelling watch yeah. uh, is the history between the head to head between yeah, the two teams. Yeah, yeah. You've been doing a lot of that, and I admire mm. your courage in mm. actually championing that cause mm. over the last uh, five, thank ten you, years. Yes, you, yeah. uh, but it is what it needs to be told. That mm. story angle, uh, coverage is yeah, camera you put in there, mm. but tell the stories behind the people playing, mm. the teams playing, the history, mm. the rivalry, and everything. Mm. So that's where a lot of work is done, uh, we, and that's where we need to do and us. People like us investing in uh, local sports media capacity uh, are, have a high focus and lasered on that in terms of ability to tell the stories. Mm. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, this is really expensive stuff, you know, and you're, going against, you're, going, you're going now going against um, some very big organiza global organizations with very deep pockets. Mm. Can you compete if, 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 if a local investor wants to get into sports media broadcasting? And he comes to you. What would you What would you tell them? Can they compete? I think it's the, there's a huge, huge opportunity uh, okay. for uh, would-be investors. Uh, big broadcasters op operate on the base of scale. Mm. Uh, they're looking for people to go. I, mean, I would like to cover table tennis down Bangusha Street. Mm. Uh, I mean, I played that when I was growing up yeah. playing table tennis. Yeah. That itself uh, connects to me. It might not connect to the IMGs of the other yeah. bigger, bigger yeah. players. It might not connect even to the super sport, yeah. uh, but to me it connects because yeah. I'm a local boy. Yeah. And I grew up doing table tennis on the street with yeah. the, with the uh, picnic yeah. on both yeah. sides <laughs> and, and the wood in the, the team of picnic yeah, on both yeah, sides yeah, where yeah. you play. Yeah. So for me, that's um, and that's why we're called Afro Sports, really, mm. uh, because we're trying to cover the sports that other people would not cover. Mm. Uh, we're trying to actually uh, put a nationalistic sentiment behind uh, sports mm. coverage mm. in terms of the boxing down the road, the table tennis, the, the uh, Onola football matches mm. that's not covered. That's where our laser is focused in terms of local sports. Yeah. There's, there's, um, it's interesting that you say this because we're, the, my guest last week, uh, Remy Ogunpiton, said something similar, oh. right? And, you, you know, I think that sometimes we, as I was telling Remy last week, sometimes I think we overthink what sports business is. We, we overthink what a sports product is. Mm -hmm. We think it's supposed to be something grand like the EPL or the NFL or the, no, you know. Yeah, but you could just create something. You know, get a few guys to to participate. You'd be surprised the and amount of people that will be interested. Yeah, yeah. You'd be yeah. surprised. I mean, so what we're trying to do is to put yeah. production capacity. Yet, uh, technology today allows us to do that, mm. uh, to cover production uh, in a very uh, cost-affordable way. Mm. Uh, in, in, but that's what we're trying to do, to try to get the on on song sports mm. uh, out there on camera. Mm. and see whether it connects to the average Nigerian. Yeah. It can never all be about the Premier League. It can never mm. all be about the World Cup. Yeah. It has to be about the... On, I mean, a good um, media example that I use is Gaelic sports on uh, Setanta. Okay. Gaelic sport is Irish sport. Mm. And they build a brand around mm. Gaelic sport. That mm. is Irish sport. Mm. And, on, and they're taking that brand to the world mm. as Gaelic, the channel that covers Gaelic mm. sport. Why can't we do the same thing for Nigerian sports? Sport, there's many yeah. sports. There's wrestling. There's Dembe wrestling. Yeah. We did Dembe wrestling yeah. for a while. Very popular. Very, very, very popular in yeah. the north. Yeah. So why can't we put that on global? And the guy, the young guy that's uh, produce, uh, promoting that, Maxwell, mm. um, one show maybe gets about 30 million views mm. on, on YouTube <laughs> across the world. Wow. Uh, and people were applying uh, from the USA to come yeah. and do Dembe boxing in wow. Nigeria. Wow. So that's the power yeah. of your local sport. Mm. And that's where 
we have plugged that. I mean, we're not competing on the high scale. We are, when we do that, we do it on, on that. It has to have some connection mm. uh, to Africa. Mm. Uh, and that's why we do the African Cup of Nations, uh, because it's African. Mm. Uh, I mean, we would try to get um, rights around the league as well. I mean, Nigeria Local League. We need to put those assets on TV and grow them. And that's where, I mean, in my own uh, legacy uh, mm. is going to be. Okay. That, that's, like, like you said, if you're not on TV, yeah. You haven't started a sports business in, 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 no, in, in yeah. scale. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like running an economy without a bank. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar. Without a sports yeah. media. Yeah. You, you haven't started a sports business. Yeah. You are still in the amateur amateur phases. Okay, storytelling. First, this is a fifty six billion dollar industry. We're nearing that. Do you understand? And you know, I did a little research before the program started to to find out like the top you know, the top um, sports media properties out there in the world. Um, I, the EPL leads when it comes to viewership and engagement. Mm -hmm. And then you have the likes of the M NFL, the, the UEFA champion. That's it on the screen. Uh, but it's too, I doubt we can really see uh, enough of that. Yeah. But, okay, so Africa, there's nowhere, Africa is nowhere, there's no sports product in Africa. Yeah. There. That makes it realer. The, yeah, but interestingly, there's one championship that started in Singapore, I think, is now the third most watched and um, engaging um, okay. sports product okay. in the world. Mm. Do you understand? When it started, Singapore is a small country, which adds, to, which you know, buttresses the point that you have made. You do it in this small country, and then you interest people around the world, and yeah. before you know it, yeah. you know you, you, you reach um, almost a billion people and, and, and the like. Streaming. Yeah. I know you're very uh, big on linear TV. Yes. Are you doing anything on, on streaming? Because I hear streaming is beginning to... Um, um, it's the growth area now, yeah, and yeah. linear TV is, yeah. you know, yeah. like boxed into a corner more or less. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we're doing what, that. What do you see is going to happen? Uh, that's the future of it, mm. uh, and that's. I mean, if you look at the way new platforms um, revolutionizes uh, existing platform and mm. more or less disrupt existing platform, we mm. take the cue again mm. uh, from what the English people have done in the Premier League. Mm. Uh, the reason why they have the Premier League it was mm. because of the advent of Sky TV. Okay. So once Sky TV came mm. and they put three billion pounds on the table mm. uh, for so they, the top twenty clubs in the national league mm. prior to that pulled mm. out and said, "Oh, that money is for us. It's mm. me they want to see on TV," mm. Mm. <laughs> and and that's what came. Uh, that's what became the Premier League yeah, today. Yeah. It was a media pool. Okay. Uh, Sky TV pulled out its clubs yeah. and they formed the Premier League from the normal first division team. team yeah. Same, and they had an agreement with the lower mm. lower, lower uh, uh, tier leagues. What could have happened in another 30 years down the line, two years ago, mm. was streaming. You mentioned mm. streaming rights began to pull mm. the G20 clubs mm. in Europe mm. away. They, can, they now can see, okay, people don't want to watch Leicester, Leicester, Leicester and UEFA Champions League. Mm. All they want to watch is Liverpool, Manchester mm. United, mm. four in this mm. club, four in Spain, four. And the G20 decided to pull out based on another media pool. Mm. So... To, to bottle the problem, media is a catalyst for it, mm. and streaming mm. would disrupt the whole ecosystem Industry, yeah. a, a, again because yeah. people now realize that they can monetize their content directly mm. Uh, mm. to the end user as opposed to the uh, monetizing it through a platform, Sky mm. TV, DSTV, Supersport. Mm. I can go directly to the end user and get my money from it. FIFA told me about 15 years ago that the day they are waiting for is when the World Cup final will be streamed across mm. and get to two billion and ask the two billion people to pay one pound of <laughs> one pound each so the entire money they get for their yeah. entire right cycle for yeah. a year they can yeah. get it from one match, one match yeah. the final. So that, yeah. that's the power of streaming uh, we're doing a bit there as well um i think we we are beginning to put our free sports mm. uh on tv free of charge as well when you mm. watch us on the champions league on the african cup of nations you see a, a qr code mm. uh that means you can actually scan that QR code mm. and take the match you're watching on TV mm. and take it to the grocery store to go and buy your grocery while still watching, as opposed oh, to okay. being 
glued and, on TV. And you can interact? Oh, you can interact. You can oh, interact. wow. Yeah, so we did that. We've done that for the, the last African Nations, not even the last, one before the last, the mm. 2021 African Nations played in 2022. We did that and we got 3 million direct-to-user requests. Mm. Uh, mm. 3 million people requested to our URL link mm. and they were watching from it. This one, we have about 7 million people yeah. last Nations, Nations Cup yeah. directing, uh, um, requesting for our URL to watch mm. it while on the go streaming. Mm. So streaming is here to stay yeah. and it's going to change the industry for good. Okay. You were talking about something that you're doing right now that I think is fundamental to sports business success in Nigeria. Because like you say, media is a, is, is a critical um, component in the, and that's um, data, that's correct, yeah. Media measurement. Audience measurement. Yeah. Audience, audience, audience measurement, yeah. you know. Something that clients can believe in um, and, and so and, and broadcast networks can also believe in. How, how are you going with that? Yeah. Well, it's what I saw a few years back um, as the biggest, uh, the missing link um, in the entire eco chain mm. or a value chain of mm. sports broadcasting mm. was that I keep going to sponsors and say, ah, uh, Super Eagles is playing, mm. we believe. 30 million people are watching mm. but i knew inside me that i couldn't prove it mm. <laughs> that 30 million people are watching but it's yeah. just a cliche yeah. and it's always been a buying and selling uh dynamics of mm. who blinks first mm. uh, do you have 30 million in your pocket or do you have 50 million in your pocket yeah. oh yeah. am i going to go with 10 million yeah. so there's no scientific way of measuring how we buy and sell there's no currency common currency yeah. denominator yeah so what we what we've done in the last three years is to build that currency uh, that, that currency is audience measurement audience yeah. measurement is all about telling you at nine o'clock in the morning how many people watched i mean and then the next day how many people watched super egos last night yeah and the yeah. numbers um you, you might be interested to know that how um what's it called super bowl the american uh, biggest sports coverage yeah, in yeah. america is sold they don't sell their rights based on the rate card. They sell it based on, not, not, not on a specific rate card, rate yeah. card, but based on the range. They will tell you a sport will cost between 7 million and 10 million, okay. depending on the ratings that comes tomorrow comes, morning. Yeah, yeah. So what you've done there is scientifically say, I'm not going to charge you for more than what I've delivered to mm. you. If I deliver 9 million, yeah. you're going to pay $8 million per sport. Yeah. If I deliver 2 million, then you're going to pay $1 million per sport. Oh, okay. So that means you're only buying what you're, you're only paying for what you're getting. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You're only paying for what you're getting. And that's uh, the science of media buying. And that's the science of media buying that we're bringing here. Mm. Now, uh, we launched that in Abuja last week. Okay. Uh, the audience measurement. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a technology called the people meter. Mm. Uh, people meter meaning that you have people in there you put meters in their homes mm. and you measure directly uh, by return path mm. what they are actually watching. How many people, how many minutes they spent on the match or mm. drama mm. or news and did they consume the advert or not, you mm. know. Uh, yeah. So that's the, it's almost like the, I mean, the analytics of uh, linear television. So that's going to change the media industry as well. Yeah. We, there's something that you said earlier that I, I think would help people understand how important media is. And that's the fact that you, you were talking about FIFA. I think you, it was FIFA you said that yeah, said, yeah. time's gonna come when we, 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 we film a match, yeah. we broadcast it, yeah. and we, two billion people get to watch and yeah. each person pays a, a dollar. Like and this is what I tell people about the huge potential of sports in Nigeria. We have not even, we have not even started to do anything, right? We have a population of 220 million people yeah. We have a continental influence that can, that can scale, because if it's successful in Nigeria, Africa wants it. So that can scale up the, the audience to about a billion people, mm -hmm. right? And if it's interesting enough, if it's as interesting as Nigerian music, for instance, you probably have 200 million people across Africa who, if they give you $1 yeah. for the entire season, mm -hmm. is, we're still talking about $250 million. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a huge area and it's, a, it's an area that, you know, if you've got deep pockets, that's where you want to play, perhaps, you know. Um, we're going to go on a short break. Uh, so when we return, we'll, we'll um, do, more, do more of what we're doing and then um, enlighten the viewers a bit more. Don't go away. We'll, we'll be back in a moment. And when we return, the business continues. Welcome back to Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. 
With me in the studio is still Mr. Uh, Mr. Rochimi Pedro, and we're still talking sports business, um, uh, sports broadcast media business. All right. Um, AI has now entered the, the fray. You know, we're talking about linear TV, then went to streaming. AI has joined. What exactly should we expect from the introduction of AI um, going forward? Now, it's still a little bit of the unknown. I mean, uh, I've looked, I looked into that about six months ago and tried to understand what the impact would be. Mm. Um, and I can see directly where um, it's going to change um, 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 things is actually in the area of capacity. I mean, sports, okay. ju sports journalism. Okay. Uh, quite a lot of um, scripts could be written by AI these mm. days as mm. opposed to having a journalist on set mm. uh, that writes the uh, script yourself. Mm. But the basic things uh, in terms of connecting the passion of the people mm. to the commerce is still going to be a human interface. Yeah. But what about a reduction in cost? You know, like absolutely, there's yeah. there's going to be a huge reduction in cost. I mean, mm. uh, we are looking, we are investigating uh, into that now to see mm. how we can reduce our cost by employing uh, AI mm. uh, to do most of our writing. Mm. Uh, but yes, it's going to reduce the cost, uh, and it's going to introduce a lot more efficiency into mm. the production ch chain itself. Uh, so we will we look forward to it. But I mean, we need to. Uh, tread with baby steps. Uh, mm. <laughs> I mean, because everything technology, yeah. uh, you could be ahead of your time, yeah. uh, and, you, and you miss it. Uh, you could just have to follow the curve properly, and uh, don't try to be ahead of the curve. I mean, that's always my own uh, rule of thumb when it comes to technology. Yeah. If you try to be ahead of the curve, sometimes you can you, you can, can be disrupted yeah, yeah. easily. So, but what about you now? When I talk about Afro Sport Media, I'm talking about you, and then I'm talking about like um, organizations in Nigeria who like we said, don't have the, you know, the deep pockets uh, to play really, really big. What, what do you see? Where do you, what kind of financing, where do you get your financing for your capital from? And what kind of financing for, or funding do you think would help you get where you want to go? Or, or can you guys play with the sort of funding that you have today? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, we're we all looking for funds. Uh, we mm. all... Uh, uh, low to medium scale players uh, mm. in the sports media space, mm. Mm. Uh, but we, I, I believe that once we begin to, once the um, market begins to connect the importance of media mm. uh, to sports development, and mm. once the policy makers begins to connect that dot in terms of, we are not going anywhere. All we are doing is just lip service mm. and political services mm. and by talking about sports development mm. without investing heavily in the media. Mm. Um, uh, uh, NTA, national broadcaster of this country, uh, should be empowered mm. uh, to actually play its role uh, in the public service mandates yeah. uh, that they have to actually cover national team games, mm. to cover a lot of things. It should not be a transactional approach. It mm. should be from a, a cultural benefit approach. Course, yeah. um, and um, we are working on regulation as well uh, that would allow protective categories for certain media rights mm. uh, in terms of... Uh, that was the battle we fought in the last African Nations Cup. Mm. The struggle is whether we need to pay a, a boy in the streets of my village uh, mm. in Bangboshe would need to pay mm. uh, to watch the next generation of Okocha play. Mm. Mm. Uh, we, our own uh, ethos is that first, I mean, we call it the freedom of sports. Mm. Sports, premium sports must be free, at least the ones that culturally matter mm. to the people mm. or to the development of sports locally. Mm. Uh, it would be a sad day if national team games like you almost did mm. uh, during the last AFCON and, and mm. that's the battle we fought and mm. fought last mm. AFCON that Super Eagles can only be seen on pay TV. Mm. How, where is the next generation of mm. Okocha going to come from? Maybe he doesn't have access to pay TV in his village and he plays football on the, on the, on the but village you know, square. You know like in South Africa yeah. SABC pays to broadcast um, Premier League the PSL, the PSL game, game the, yeah. Yeah. yeah and SABC is funded by the government yeah. you know yeah. so why isn't NTA uh, being I see because like you said sports is not just it's not just um, entertainment there's so much more to that there's the there's the values that oh, it yeah, teaches sure. society yeah. there's you know there's there's the employment it provides there's you know it, there's sports as the economic yeah. the economic activity that it drives yeah. Yeah. so the government needs you know, I'm always circumspect when it comes to asking government for, for... But I think that in some cases, like the, to the point that you have made, the boy in the village mm. who has no funds mm. should not be deprived of not Watching being... Watching the next... Do you uh, understand? So maybe we need to think about how the government can 
can participate in this to fund. I mean, so clearly has a role. I mean, mm -hmm. they have a role. Yeah. Uh, they have an intervention role. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they have a role to make sure that the connection between sports business, mm. uh, which is the media and sp amateur sport, mm. is actually made properly. Mm. And what we are trying to push for is to find a way that through regulation, mm. uh, through intervention funds, how mm. they can actually play that role, mm. uh, to s at least to set the uh, uh, the uh, motion going, yeah. in, and then you can now invite private sector participation yeah. to actually sustain it. Are you making any making any progress in that regard? Yeah, yeah. But at least the last, um, um, I mean, uh, government actually tried to uh, protect the code. I mean, mm. the broadcasters, linear broadcasters, that ensures that premium sports still stays on pre TV. Mm. Uh, and th th I think this new government is actually taking the cue uh, mm. from that in terms of uh, protect pr like protective status for free to air. Yeah. Uh, which is what we are trying to um, um, do. I really hope that you guys succeed because in the, if events of the last season of the Nigerian Premier Football League are anything to go by, it looks like our football is picking up um, steam again. And, and uh, for, I don't know if you saw the Oriental Derby. It was massive. Yeah. The stadium was yeah, packed. Um, for many matches yeah. this last season, um, the Adaban, Adama Simba Stadium in Ibadan was packed. Of course, the north is usually um, packed. So there's movement, you know, and we're moving in the right the, direction. The right direction. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's been, it's been uh, that for the program. Yeah. I'd really like to talk to you some more because we can't cover this thing. In, in one show. <laughs> not one show, not <laughs> ten shows. You know, there's still yeah. a lot um, to... But any last words uh, when it comes to sports media? Well, I, I just keep saying... Uh, You've been a champion of local sports mm, uh, for thanks. many, many, many years now. Mm. And I admire your courage, mm. even uh, like a lone voice in the wilderness uh, when you scream yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And I think some of us are beginning to take the cue from your preaching, mm. yeah, from your you. community, from the message of him passing across that yeah, we now yeah. need to uh, deep in our local sports. I mean, yeah. that's the only thing. If our music can do it, if our food is doing it, if yeah. our fashion is doing yeah. it globally and yeah. crossing, uh, crossing, crossing across into the main street, yeah. why can't our sports do right. it? And we, we, I mean, I caught the book from the things that you've been preaching mm. three, four years ago. I said, I need to change my direction now. <laughs> my direction <laughs> now needs to be more yeah. of from home to international. international. So that's where we're going and that's where we are headed. And we believe that, I mean, it's beginning to yield fruits. People mm. are beginning to understand that language, particularly mm. for me, issues around racism and mm. co. Uh, that nobody has a voice yeah, yeah. Uh, for the black uh, for the black athlete and yeah. majority of our athletes these days are from people that look like you and I. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we pray that the, that that thing that you started a few years ago uh, mm, keeps true, uh, true. germinating and producing more Afro sports. Like yeah. People. Thank you very much, yeah. Ruti. Me, it's, it's been nice having you on the program. Would I'm sure it would engage more in the future, yeah. right? And so, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Viewers, we're going to take, go on a short break now. And when we return, I would be return, would have Mr. Re Sorry, when we return, we're going to have Mr. Remy Olukoya, who is the CEO of Falcon Golf Development Company. We're going to be talking golf. Uh, golf is a huge area, huge sport in Nigeria, and um, played by very important people. And um, I'm sure that there's a lot that you're going to hear that you like. So don't go away. We have uh, one minute to let you do what you want to do. When we return, the business continues. <laughs>